My name is Wayne Walker, and I'm the Managing Director of GCMS, Global Capital Market Solutions. As far as uh, my background, born in Jamaica, raised in New York City, and along the way with uh, a lot of time in Southern California, specifically San Diego. And now I live in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, my background, uh, education-wise, I studied at uh, the State University of New York, uh, College at Buffalo, and I also did uh, an internship, or I should say an exchange program, at uh, University of San Diego in Southern California. And of course, after university, I've also taken several uh, professional courses, uh, for example, uh, Series 3 uh, in the States, which allows me to trade uh, in commodities, uh, commodities futures, uh, options, and uh, also have uh, some several uh, examinations in uh, forex trading, for example, the ACI uh, diploma, and several other uh, professional um, courses along the way. Yes, uh, the, the guide, uh, our reality-based trading guide, relatively small, but it is uh, uh, to the point and uh, the key or the, the center of the guide is really, as we uh, call it, reality based getting to the nuts and bolts of uh, uh, trading. Because a lot of um, uh, trading really is just really um, executing on the, uh, the basics. And in this guide, we start with the, uh, the premise or the, um, the background that the reader really has uh, uh, no trading experience in taking the person from that level into going through, um, uh, the again, in the basic steps up to uh, being a trader. Yes, uh, GCMS, Global Capital Market uh, Solutions. Our uh, tagline or our specialty is that we are the specialist in practical uh, capital markets education. And when we say uh, practical, that means for us that um, uh, in the trading, we actually work uh, primarily with the hands-on practical steps, not um, things, um, without almost say uh, gambling, where you, know, you have certain places promising riches almost overnight. Oh, you place two trades here. and. Um, you know, it'll just make tons of money. Nothing like that. It's realistic, working with the basics. How do you go about buying? How do you go about um, uh, selling? And uh, that is what uh, I said we do focus on, the practical uh, steps. Uh, the background um, uh, for the firm, back in uh, 2008 when we uh, started, was that at that time, uh, I've also, prior to uh, the launch of the firm, taken a look at what was out there as far as uh, uh, education. And uh, frankly, a lot of what I saw and uh, my colleague uh, that we saw at the time was that uh, it really wasn't very uh, realistic. It was, uh, again, a lot of this, um, let's call it this uh, casino type uh, education where a lot of people were promising, yes, you take our course and you know, it's uh, 24,000 sterling in a day or any of these uh, uh, things. And of course, being uh, uh, traders, we know uh, this really isn't uh, realistic to take someone from, again, with no uh, uh, background to making these uh, fantasyful um, uh, uh, amounts uh, the next day. So um, we again started with uh, the basics, practical and realistic, and uh, what I work with, especially um, in describing uh, GCMS and the effectiveness, as I stress, uh, and my friends maybe are even getting a little tired of it now, where I say, you know what, you actually look at the results of our students. Because if you are in um, education in, or training in any type, it could be a, a boxing coach or a piano uh, teacher or professor or any sort of uh, university or training institution, we need to see the results of your students. In our case, we're obviously quite uh, proud that we literally have uh, a list, dozens of and dozens of uh, success stories from our students working professionally, 
their own private trading. And uh, this uh, really, this is our, this is our nucleus, this is our genie, the, the success of our students. As far as uh, the goal or how we approach uh, training, let's say, uh, for staff at a bank or uh, elite uh, top uh, university students, uh, obviously the, the staff at the bank, they typically have some more um, uh, practical hands-on uh, uh, experience. And then with the students, they're heavy uh, theoretical. But now with the, in the case of, let's say, a, a City or a Barclays or a Saxo, um, how we've uh, approached it there is uh, literally the, the banks have just sent uh, staff to us, uh, a lot of them uh, back office or, or what we call middle office um, uh, staff, for example, people working with settlements of trades and some of them actually uh, junior traders. And uh, here again, why would, uh, let's say, for example, a, a Saxo Bank uh, send uh, folks to us or for example, a Danske Bank, which is one of the largest banks in uh, Scandinavia or Nordea, uh, bank is uh, again on the results of students where uh, people, some of them have taken it privately, returned uh, to the workplace and, uh, and mentioned uh, to, let's say, HR personnel or other colleagues, hey, you know, I've taken the, uh, this, um, the GCMS diploma uh, course, this is what I've learned. And um, one of our um, uh, quite uh, very nice, uh, again, uh, these uh, success stories of the students is that there is, uh, for example, we have a, a Forex uh, firm, a broker in actually in Gothenburg, Sweden, where uh, the staff is actually exclusive, um, uh, where everyone there has the, uh, the GCMS diploma. We've worked with, uh, let's say, some of the, the hot names now in uh, trading and trading technology, for example, uh, uh, Tradable, uh, where um, there, for example, uh, student assistants, pretty much all of them are, uh, have gone through our program and they've actually seeked out our, our graduates. Sure, our relationship uh, with the universities, uh, well, in Europe, uh, began with uh, Copenhagen Business School, which is one of, uh, again, the, one of the top-ranked schools. Uh, in Europe and, and definitely in uh, uh, Denmark. And as they say, really uh, from there, uh, let's say the story really and, and the ball really got uh, rolling because from there we uh, started to teach also at uh, held classes literally at the uh, University of Copenhagen. Um, Aarhus uh, University, uh, another area in uh, uh, Denmark. And we more or less uh, were covering uh, the, the major universities in Denmark. And then from there, we started to get feelers or uh, requests from uh, Sweden. Uh, and the first school there that we uh, started to teach at was um, uh, Jön Shipping International Business School. Uh, from there, University of Gothenburg, uh, Stockholm School of e Economics is one of, again, one of the top schools. They actually uh, get the, uh, the central bank governors from Sweden. A lot of them actually graduated from uh, Stockholm School of Economics. And as many things, it, it really uh, took off. We expanded to Norway. Uh, Norwegian Business School, BI as they call it, uh, Oslo. And uh, about the past um, uh, two years, we started to, uh, to focus uh, a little bit more on uh, Asia and also having some connections uh, with the United States um, in Asia, specifically with uh, China. Uh, we held courses at uh, Nanjing University, Nanjing Audit uh, University, and uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, Nanjing University is typically ranked one of the top five uh, universities in China. Uh, Shanghai um, University, recently, we were also at, in uh, the Philippines at um, Ateneo de Manila uh, University, which is one of the top uh, schools there. And one of the, uh, the more recent uh, unique partnerships we have had with a uni university type uh, institution, which is the, the Danish international students in Copenhagen, where there we uh, teach almost exclusively uh, American exchange students. And in this program, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a credit given program that's uh, transferred back now to some of, uh, like some of the 30 top uh, schools uh, in the United States. So as far as on the university side, we have um, 
uh, let's say a solid hold there and uh, literally almost every uh, day now we're getting uh, a request from different schools uh, in different areas whether it's uh, for example in uh, the Baltics we're uh, in the middle of uh, putting something together there that's uh, for the fall um, in Belgium and we uh, continue to expand. Uh, actually, uh, coaching clients in, in Europe or in Asia, uh, they're actually, uh, they're, let's say, many similarities. They aren't really all that um, much different as far as uh, in the mindset. Maybe in some cases, uh, let's say in Asia, folks uh, might be a little bit more uh, risk uh, willing. Uh, and, but outside of that, it, it really is very similar. And then, okay, there are some other... Um, Say another difference would be um, in the area of, uh, let's say, uh, product exposure, where, let's say, in Europe or in the States, people are a little bit more exposed to the different asset classes. You know, for example, in foreign exchange, uh, equity derivatives, and when I say equity derivatives, uh, contracts for difference, and of course, uh, standard uh, equities, where um, uh, in Asia, Asia Pacific, a lot of the, uh, the, the exposure that people have had uh, to trading it is really a lot on, um, let's say, the regional equities or the, the local equities. For example, if it's in, uh, in, in China, people are familiar with, uh, um, with the Hong Kong Exchange or in, uh, in the Philippines, and it's going to be uh, the Manila Exchange. So there, it's now exposing people to the other uh, asset classes. And from personal experience, from uh, really, again, recently spending so much time in the region, uh, they're definitely uh, coming along and there are a lot of opportunities on the, uh, the foreign exchange side and definitely in this uh, equity derivative contract for difference where I, where I do see that people, once they're aware of it, they're really, uh, there's a pretty um, relatively quick uh, uptake of this. Well, for, uh, for myself and, and of course, uh, GCMS, our, um, I would say our contribution to uh, financial education is that we have kept the focus on this as we, uh, as we state, you know, this specialist in practical uh, capital markets education. We aren't the guys uh, you go to if you really want to s sit through this long uh, theoretical process, uh, the elasticity of the demand curve, Black Scholes uh, options uh, calculation models, that isn't, uh, that's not a thing that we do. We actually take, again, uh, for example, in the basic diploma program, folks with um, zero trading background, and by day two, uh, we get them trading. Because actually, in order to receive a diploma, you, you need to trade. Uh, so there really isn't a way around uh, this, and we have been able to, uh, to do it. And as I was stressed before, for yes, it's nice that I say it, but in, in the end, it's really about uh, the results of uh, uh, the students. And uh, that I feel uh, quite comfortable with, where we do have this, um, uh, this, this track record, this uh, literally the uh, portfolio of students uh, that have returned back to us and uh, tell us we have employers now who are seeking out our students so in, in the end. Uh, it, it, it seems that, uh, again, it, it's work that we've kept that focus on practical education and, of course, the results of the students. There's no really way around that. Yes, the, um, the driver uh, uh, for our e-learning uh, program um, it's really from the fact that uh, we do, again, most of our classes are in uh, Europe, primarily, primarily in uh, Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, uh, Norway, and uh, specific places in, in uh, Asia, Southeast Asia. And uh, of course, with uh, this education, we are starting to see more and more clients requesting it from maybe different parts of uh, the States, other parts of Europe, and it can be a thing from uh, between travel or just uh, it's a, a timing issue where they've, again, sent several requests to us. Hey, how can we get your diploma? How can we access uh, this education without um, uh, traveling uh, to Denmark? Okay, let's say if I don't uh, uh, live in Shanghai, how can I get this? And um, 
uh, my colleague uh, and I, we were actually able to, uh, to make this, uh, uh, the investment to create um, the e-learning program where we take the essence of what's uh, uh, taught in uh, class and put this in an interactive uh, uh, program where interactive uh, exams, the content from what's uh, in class, and we also include a, a component where that uh, there is this um, live or online uh, interaction on specific uh, days that uh, those that take uh, the learning are able to get in touch with us uh, personally, not just a thing where, okay, you get a login to the platform and then you're on your own. It's not uh, that simple. We do actually allow, uh, and we actually have built in uh, uh, the program where there is this uh, personal contact. And then of course, if people would like to supplement uh, what they've learned online with uh, in-person class, they're definitely welcome to do that. Uh, and as, a, and um, uh, as how we have it now, we still, again, on a regular basis where people continue uh, to fly into our classes, but for those that aren't able to do it, we're now offering it um, uh, online and uh, it allows to expand to other markets. Well, as far as uh, the forest uh, landscape or Esquire area uh, now, in general, uh, Forex continues uh, to grow as far as um, bringing on new traders. And uh, one of the things I'm uh, personally most excited about as far as the, seeing how the, the Forex market will develop is the, um, uh, the introduction or, the, or the, the new traders specifically from the emerging markets that are, their eyes are opening up to, uh, to Forex. And I would really like to see how this uh, relationship or I would develops with the new traders coming in. And again, from the specific emerging markets, uh, China, uh, Philippines, uh, the parts of uh, Latin America, the Caribbean, a lot of uh, parts of India as well, uh, all those traders, how they, um, how they adapt to it and actually how the, uh, the Forex market uh, adapts to them. And I think that's uh, as the years uh, progress, the next, let's say, uh, three to five years, how well do we integrate a lot of the, uh, the new traders coming in from the, uh, the emerging markets? Ah, social trading. That, um, for me at this point, I would almost say it's, uh, let's call it the, the unfinished story or, or wait and see, because it has been definitely getting uh, a lot of uh, press. Uh, first, you have um, the MT4 with the EAs, or they call uh, expert uh, advisors, where again, you can uh, buy an algorithm or follow the traders. Of course, many people uh, are aware of um, uh, the social trading uh, they have with uh, eToro. They're definitely one of the leaders uh, in that um, uh, area. And as I said uh, at the beginning, this is a kind of an, let's call it a, this unfinished uh, story. Uh, I really want just to see how um, it plays out because I've heard uh, many good things uh, uh, with it. And it's with, with um, many new introductions. You know, some of it, um, you know, you could definitely see that they, we need to work out some things uh, with that. But uh, so far, it, it, it looks uh, uh, quite promising. On a, on a personal level with this social uh, type trading. Uh, one of the things that I've done from uh, request uh, also from uh, students is I've, you know, over the past year, I post uh, my trades on Twitter. I mean, it's uh, uh, for a closed uh, group, but this is a thing now that's uh, worked out quite well where people can really see, okay, well, you talk about trading, let's see your trades. So I, um, I post them uh, to, uh, uh, to students that have gone through um, our diploma program. Uh, mobile trading, my take on it, it's that uh, mobile trading, I would call it, um, let's say, execution, or yes, it's to place uh, trades, to buy and sell. As far as uh, really going through um, in-depth uh, analysis, you know, on, in the middle of a, a running session, trying to do uh, a heavy analysis, I really don't see that uh, practical at the moment or sitting in the back of a, a taxi and, and making uh, you know, tough uh, trade decisions there. 
I, I just don't really see if, uh, feel that we're at that level uh, yet uh, technology-wise. So for, as far as for mobile trading, yes, it's here. People are clearly uh, uh, doing it. But when we uh, use this term uh, mobile trading, I would say it's more as, um, let's call it mobile executing, meaning that, yes, on the move, you buy and sell, but you're buying and selling from analysis that was done uh, in a more stable environment, let's say at home or at office or, or a place where uh, you do have this um, uh, time to take in uh, what's going on. Well, why should I buy and why should I sell? And then if you are running down the street or you just hear some news or something happens, then yes, the mobile is executing your buying sell, not really doing uh, in-depth uh, analysis. But again, with technology, this is where we are today, maybe in the year or two would take on a different story. As far as uh, the Forex uh, industry, how it is, I definitely see uh, the, the, for the future of trading, it's bringing in um, the, the emerging market traders. Uh, as I've touched on a little bit before, this is the area that of course gets me personally very excited and I would think for, uh, for the players that are out there, uh, the banks or the brokers, uh, you know, let's see how do we uh, uh, make help uh, the developing markets uh, make this transition um, into uh, forex trading in this, uh, as they call uh, the, the term they use now, the, the, the next 11. Uh, for example, Mexico, Turkey, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, all those areas as they come in um, into the forex market and into the derivative market, how do we... Um, you know, how do we interact uh, with them? So it's definitely going to be quite exciting. Uh, then, of course, for us in the, the, in the other uh, developed markets, it will continue uh, to grow. And the, uh, the growth, the driver with the Internet, as we touched on uh, the, the mobile trading, where you can now execute trades, the back of a taxi on the slopes, uh, this will definitely um, add to the volume where five, ten years ago, placing a trade from uh, the slopes in Zurich you know, was a little uh, uh, tough thing uh, to do, but now this it's, it's, it's quite normal. So the future, I believe, for uh, forex trading uh, is uh, quite bright, and as always, as long as um, we keep an eye on uh, each other uh, with the players so that there isn't any sort of, uh, uh, let's call it a misconduct out there, I think things are uh, quite positive. But Again, a lot of that is coming from, uh, I see, how well we uh, welcome and bring in the traders from the, uh, the emerging markets. Uh, the merger between uh, finance and uh, technology, again there, uh, definitely uh, an exciting area for, uh, for us players. Uh, in the sense, um, well, actually, we'll take a concrete um, example. One of the uh, the new uh, innovative uh, players out there with um, Tradable, they're uh, a good example where we have um, trading, let's say the existing technology and how that's been going. It's been more or less set for uh, many years. And then you have a firm uh, like Tradable, Tradable, they come in and they have this uh, open platform where um, uh, other uh, developers can actually come in and offer uh, their, their services, uh, for example, their own EA, or let's say in, in our case, where we've uh, contributed uh, some education apps. So as far as um, uh, this merger, it's, it's continuing, and I, I expect it to, uh, uh, to expand where we have, again, these um, uh, innovative uh, players, uh, for example, like uh, Tradable, and then with the continued uh, growth of um, mobile trading and expanding it, uh, and this will be quite interesting to see how we expand it from, as I've uh, mentioned, where mobile trading now, it's a lot of, well, really mobile executing, but then developing that so you're able to do more uh, in-depth uh, analysis on the go. Because with the current uh, format, let's say if you're working on um, uh, and an iPhone or Android, anything, uh, any device uh, like that. I mean, the, the just the size of it. Uh, there, you do have certain uh, some limitations just on the side, uh, or I should say, just on the size. Meaning that if you need to um, adjust the chart, 
to uh, add on additional studies to do more, um, let's say, more in-depth uh, analysis. Um, that currently really isn't here, but it will be really interesting to see uh, in the next, uh, let's say, two to four years, how much they're able to, um, uh, to develop the, uh, the technology to allow you to do this uh, quite in-depth uh, analysis uh, on the go. Well, uh, the, let's say the global um, uh, financial uh, landscape at the, at the moment, it's really, uh, I would say, where we are now, it's, it's really still digesting in many ways, uh, to use the term, uh, the excesses from you know, the 2007s and the 2008s. And as far as example that, uh, okay, we're still uh, digesting this, let's take uh, the U.S. Uh, market. Uh, that went through, yeah, many years of uh, uh, pain, and it's just now, uh, for example, if you take a look at the job numbers, the housing numbers, that we're beginning to see uh, a slight turn where it is an improved uh, job market, definitely not back to uh, how it, uh, the good levels. Uh, we're beginning to see some signs of life uh, in housing, so in the States, still digesting, processing all the pain up from, uh, from 2008. In Europe, uh, in the in the eurozone, uh, I think everyone pretty much uh, knows all the stories. Whether it's um, things going on in Greece, still digesting, and recently uh, uh, with the whole uh, let's call it uh, incident in uh, Cyprus, where there's a lot of uh, digesting to do there. Um, in the developing markets, okay, they have it a little uh, a bit better. So uh, as far as where we are now, particularly in the, uh, let's call it the development markets, Europe, uh, the, uh, the States, it, it is really uh, digesting a lot of what, uh, from, still from, from 2008. And as far as the, um, the numbers, uh, from the, and again, the numbers from economic uh, reports on interest rates and job numbers and production numbers, I mean, we are seeing uh, some signs of um, improvement at least so far for this year, most of the major um, uh, stock markets, it's, well, it's relatively uh, uh, a bullish market, so things are looking uh, better on, on, on that side. And then as far as uh, some of the other areas, as we know, uh, with uh, mobile trading and the technology, we continue to see the development there. And then whether it's, um, as we, we talked a lot on, of course, the, uh, the, the Forex market, but in the markets or the capital markets in general, uh, the exciting area for, for many, for, again, for myself, but really for the players and the banks that are out there, the brokers, is how we, um, yeah, how we welcome and, and, and how do we deal with uh, the new uh, traders coming in from, as they call it, the next 11 countries and many of the emerging markets, whether it's uh, you know, in Brazil or India or Vietnam, the Philippines, uh, Thailand, all the, 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 the new players that are coming in, uh, the new traders that are coming in uh, to the global uh, capital markets, because let's face it, this is where uh, the growth is uh, now and this is where the growth is uh, the foreseeable future in these uh, next uh, 11, as they're uh, called.